It's dark and it's mysterious and it's a deck full of masked freaks. I'm going to introduce you to an army you've never seen before. Happy Halloween Planeswalkers! Today I've got a zombie army Oathbreaker deck that's not going to use any zombie token cards at all. It's an interesting little deck, and I hope you stay tuned to see it. If you like the content I make, and you want more of the delicious Oathbreaker content I put out for you guys, then please remember to plus one my loyalty below. Let's get into it. Today, our Planeswalker that is heading up this deck is going to be Nico Bolas, Dragon God. Nicker Bolas is mostly our deck's commander because he gives us the unique advantage of having access to all of the colors we need to be able to properly use a mass. But let's get into him a little bit deeper. So he's a four loyalty planeswalker. He has all the loyalty abilities of all other planeswalkers on the battlefield, which is great for us. His plus one is going to let us draw a card and then each opponent will exile a card from their hand or a permanent they control. This is draw value and removal, which we kind of expect for a 5 mana Planeswalker. His minus 3 is to destroy target creature or Planeswalker. And his minus 8, which might make it hard for us to use him a lot of the time, is that each opponent who doesn't control a legendary creature or Planeswalker just loses the game. We're not really angling to use that ability, but it is something that other players will worry about, which is why I've chosen a very specific signature spell to help protect our game plan. Lazotev Plating for one in a blue will let us amass one, which puts a 1-1 counter on a zombie army we control. Then we, and the permanents we control, will gain Hexproof till the end of turn. Since this is a Halloween-themed deck tech, our game plan is to play some little tricks or treats. And since most of our changelings are shapeshifters that can be any creature we want in the night, what a lot of people don't realize is changelings are also zombie armies, which means when we would be able to amass, we can put that 1-1 one -one counter on a changeling instead of making a zombie token, allowing us for some fun little hijinks. Let's get into our treats first, which are the draw cards that are going to help us keep going. For one red mana, Faithless Looting will let us, let us draw two cards and then discard two cards, and we can flash it back from our graveyard. Step through costs three and two blue, and it lets us return two target creatures to their owner's hands. This is a good set of spot removal, but we probably will not use this card that way too often, as it's just much better to be able to spin that two mana and get any wizard, or in this case, changeling from our deck into our hand using that wizard cycling. Chart, of course, for one in the blue is going to let us draw two cards and then discard a card unless we've attacked with a creature this turn. There is a reason we might want to discard in this deck, but more often than not, we're going to play this during our second main phase after attacking. Scrapyard Recombiner is a three cost construct creature with modular two. If we tap it and sacrifice it, we can search our library for a construct card, reveal it, and put it into our hand. We're going to usually use this to go and fetch one of our better changelings. Forerunner of the Coalition and Forerunner of the Empire, we're going to use the same way we would use our Scrapyard Recombiner. They're going to let us search our library for a specific creature type, and then they also have extra attacks. So when we play a pirate and enters the battlefield under our control, of our opponents are going to lose one life. And when we play a dinosaur, we can have one damage dealt to each creature in play. Honor the Guard Pharaoh costs two in a red. As an additional cost to cast a spell, we have to discard a card, and then we get to draw two cards and amass one. Commence the end game for four and two blue. Can't be countered. We draw two cards, and then we get to amass X, where X is the number of cards in our hand. This can be huge for us, or it might only be two, but it's still worth having in the deck. So we have quite a few changelings in this deck. Just these are our little trick-or-treaters who can pretend to be anyone. They're always in costume. Changeling Outcast for one black is a 1-1 one, one that can't block and can't be blocked, which moth does changeling similarly. We tap an untapped creature we control against flying. That extra evasion is wonderful. Universal Automaton is a 1-1 one, one that costs one, and it's a changeling. Skeletor of Changeling costs one and a black. It's a 1-1 one, one with regenerate, so it protects itself. Bloodline Pretender costs three. It's a 2-2 two, two. when it enters the battlefield, we choose a creature type. Whenever another creature of the chosen type enters the battlefield under our control, we can put a 1-1 counter on Bloodline Pretender. Nine times out of 10, we're gonna wanna choose Zombie because that's what a lot of our other creatures in the deck are. But you can choose Clown if you want, or anything for that matter. Ghostly Changeling for two in a black. 
is a 2-2 and if you pay one in black you can pump it so this one changeling can get very big and if we amass on it it can get very very big. Mistwalker for Tuna White is a 1-4 changeling with flying that we can pump its power by sacrificing its defense. Venomous changeling costs Tuna Black and it has death touch. Now with all these changelings you've got to imagine we have some pump spells in that are going to help let us amass. Grim Initiate for one red is a one with first strike that when it dies we amass. Lazotep Chancellor for, for a blue and a black. Whenever we discard a card we may pay one and amass two. That's amazing. Lazotep Reaver when it enters the battlefield we amass one. Ingrath, Captain of Chaos, has five loyalty. He gives all of our creatures menace which is great. And if we minus two him we can amass one of our creatures too. Dread Horde Invasion says at the beginning of our upkeep we lose one life and amass one, so this is just a constant pump effect. Invade the City costs one a blue and a red and it lets us amass X, where X is the number of instants and sorcery cards in our deck. Next up, let's talk about some basic removal spells that are going to help make sure to keep us in the advantage with our little trick-or-treaters. Callous Dismissal costs one and a blue. It lets us return target permanent to its owner's hand and we amass one. Bleeding Edge for one and two black is going to give a target creature minus two minus two until the end of turn and we amass two. Widespread Brutality for one a black and two red is going to let us amass two and then the army we amassed will deal damage equal to its power to each non-army creature. Pyro Class Consulate has Kinship. At the beginning of our upkeep, we may look at the top card of our library and it shares a creature type with Pyrocrass Consulate. We can reveal it, and if we do, we're going to do two damage to each creature. Next up, I want to go through a couple of spells that are going to help protect our game plan. Ward of the Unreal costs two blue and it's a 2-2 creature. It says illusion creatures we control get plus one, plus one in hexproof. Kapala, Warden of the Waves, says spells our opponents cast. The target merfolk we control costs two more to cast. And abilities our opponents activate. The target merfolk we control costs two more to cast. Again, Call to the Grave costs four and a black. It's an enchantment. It says at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player sacrifices a non-zombie creature. At the beginning of the end step, if no creatures are on the battlefield, we sacrifice Call to the Grave. Hunting Voyage for 4 and 2 black will let us choose a creature type and we return up to two creatures of that type from our graveyard to the battlefield. If we foretell this card and play it, it lets us take all creatures of the chosen type from our graveyard and put them back into play. This is a great way to restart us after board wipe. Finally, I want to talk about the cards that are just going to help us win a little bit more and are going to give us an edge that makes us fairly scary at our table, which is good for a Halloween themed deck. Water Spout Weavers has kinship. At the beginning of our upkeep, we look at the top card of our library, and if it's a creature that shares a type with Water Spout Weavers, we may reveal it. If we do, each creature we control gains flying till end of turn. Shared Animosity for Tuna Red says whenever a creature we control attacks, it gets plus one plus O until end of turn for each other attacking creature that shares a creature type with it. Crucible of Fire says dragon creatures we control get plus three plus three. Liana's Contract for 3 and 2 black. It says when it enters the battlefield, we draw 4 cards and lose 4 life. And at the beginning of our upkeep, if we control 4 or more demons with different names, we win the games. Now let's get into the mana base. We're running a unique mana base since this is a 3 color deck and there's some cards we can use that we wouldn't be able to use because of our changeling's amorphous creature type. The Lion Encampment says we can tap it for one colorless, or we can tap and add one mana of any color to our mana pool, but we can only spend that mana on ally spells. If we pay one and tap it, we can sacrifice the encampment to return target, target ally we control to its owner's hand. Animal Sanctuary taps for a colorless, but if we pay two and tap it, we can put a 1-1 counter on target bird, cat, dog, goat, ox, or snake. Base Camp enters the battlefield tapped, and we can tap it for a colorless, or we can tap to add one mana of any color. We can only spend that mana to cast a cleric, rogue, warrior, wi or wizard. We can only activate this ab or activate an ability of a cleric, rogue, warrior, or wizard. Man Tower just taps for any of our colors. Evolving Wilds will let us fetch a basic land from our deck directly into play. Exotic Orchard will tap for one mana of any color a land an opponent controls could produce. Riptide Laboratory taps for colorless, and if we pay one in blue, we can tap and return target wizard we control to its owner's hand. Rogue's Passage, we can tap for colorless, or we can pay four and tap it to make target creature unblockable this turn. 
Optimer Drift Veil enters the battlefield tapped and we can choose a color. It will tap for one mana at the chosen color. This is just a great way to fix mid game. Jack Pasture taps for a colorless. We can pay for and tap it to put a 0-1 white goat creature token onto the battlefield or we can tap it and sacrifice X goats to add X mana of any one color to our mana pool and gain X life. When Temple of the Dragon Queen enters play, it's going to enter tapped unless we have a dragon on the battlefield or we can reveal a dragon from our hand. When it enters play, we choose a color and we can tap it at one mana of the chosen color. For Morphic Expanse will let us go and fetch a basic land from our deck into play. Thriving Bluff, Isle, and more all enter play and tap for one color mana, and they can tap for a second color mana of our choice. And then we're running three islands, three mountains, and three swamps for a total of 24 lands. Now this is a budget deck, and it is a Halloween deck. I hope you guys enjoy it. It is a $32.79 deck. There are some wonderful cards you can use to upgrade this deck that are always good for tribe decks. But sadly, they were too expensive to make this deck. So if you kind of know what I'm talking about and you want to help a new Oathbreaker, please make some suggestions in the comments below. And I hope you guys have a great day and that you remember that your Planeswalker Spark lights up my life.